Massachusetts. I'm Pastor Susie Asia Barba, the youth minister here at First Church. And as many of you know, our senior minister, Pastor Michael Frady, is on sabbatical. And while he's gone, we continue to pray for him. And we look forward to his return. By way of announcements, on Sunday, September 13th, we're going to gather for an in-person worship outside on the side lawn by the garden. This will also be live webcast, so that if you prefer to worship from your home, you can do so, so you have the options. As the date draws near, we will send more info out on our weekly email blast. If you don't currently receive our emails and would like to do so, you can sign up at our church's website, firstchurchbraintree.com. If you scroll down a bit, there's a link that says subscribe to mailing list, and that way you can get our weekly emails. A second announcement is many of you know Kiyoshi, who comes to play with us on a regular basis, our violinist. His Day Street Trio will be having their final um, live webcast performance this evening at 7 p.m. If you'd like to listen to Kiyoshi and fellow musicians, you can scroll down on your YouTube page and find the pertinent info so that you can be sent the link to the show. And we wish Kiyoshi and his fellow musicians all the best. And now, my friends, let us turn our hearts and minds to the purpose of our gathering, which is to give thanks and praise, to pray and to sing to the Lord. I invite you to join me in this morning's responsive call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord, call on God's holy name. Rejoice, Rejoice in the Lord, God fills our hearts with joy. Give thanks to the Lord, proclaim God's mighty works. Rejoice in the Lord, God's miracles are a wonder to behold. Give thanks to the Lord, trust in God's salvation. Rejoice in the Lord, God shines light upon our darkness and delivers us into his glory. Amen. May your mercy and your grace continue to shine upon us. 
Bless us in our ministry to serve in Jesus' holy name. Amen. This morning's first hymn is the first three verses of Amazing Grace. Keep them safe as they work to contain the flames. Loving God, in addition to these things, we pray for all who live under the threat of violence, be it violence in the streets or violence in their own homes. We ask that peace will prevail, boundaries be respected, and that perpetrators of violence are held accountable for their actions. May individuals and communities work together to protect those who are vulnerable and afraid. God, we pray for all who quietly suffer, being afraid to let their needs be made known to others. Be a source of strength for those who are struggling with addiction, and be a source of comfort for those with mental health being affected by the uncertainties of life in this time of pandemic. And for all those who are suffering from financial hardship, may friends, neighbors, and even strangers work together to provide resources and care for those having trouble making ends meet. In whatever ways we need to help each other, and in whatever ways 
we each desire to help others. May your spirit guide us in determining what to do, where to go, and whom to turn to. God, you are our source of wisdom. You teach us how to live, how to worship, and how to pray. At this time, we join our voices to prayer, to pray, the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, Say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. This morning's scripture reading is from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Two are better than one, because they are a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, they will lift up the other. But woe to the one who is alone and falls and does not have anyone to help. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though one might prevail against another, the two will withstand one. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Glenn, for reading for us. I invite you to pray with me. Loving God, their words may stumble and minds may wander. May it be your voice that is heard. Are there any out there among you who are Simon and Garfunkel fans? I'm just going to pretend in my mind's eye that I see a bunch of hands being raised. The duo made an amazing contribution to the world of rock and roll in the 60s and 70s. For those familiar with their music, today's sermon title not a rock nor an island may sound familiar but a little bit off. Simon Garfunkel's well-known song called I Am A Rock has the repeating line, I am a rock, I am an island. Early in the song they sing, I have no need for friendship, friendship causes pain, it's laughter and loving I disdain. There is some wisdom in this song. It comes from the universal experience of pain that is felt when others let us down or relationships take a turn for the worse. These words are effectively express the raw emotions that one experiences. Sure, that's one type of wisdom. But today's scripture contains a deeper wisdom, a life-giving wisdom, a wisdom that is sustaining. This wisdom moves away from the pain into the direction of the basic human need to live in community, in connection, and in service to others, while also letting them 
be of service to ourselves. Our scripture passage tells us, two are better than one, for if they fall, one will lift up the other. Everyone, me, you, the folks next door, everyone needs to be picked up every now and then. Yet, there's this rugged individualist mentality that permeates our society. It leads to the belief that needing help is a sign of weakness, or laziness, or some other personal flaw. We're taught to be strong, or as Simon and Garfunkel put it, to be a fortress deep and mighty. Thing is, that doesn't really work nor is it healthy. There are some ways in which we know this, and yet in other ways we hold back. We demonstrate a clear understanding of it right here in our own congregation. When parishioners are struggling, we send cards, make visits, help with errands, provide transportation, hold each other up in prayer, and simply love those in our community of faith. This work is good, but sometimes, in certain situations, we're reluctant to ask for help for ourselves. Each Sunday in every church I've been a part of, there's a time for people to share their prayer requests. It is exceptionally rare that I hear someone say, I would like prayer for myself. I also rarely hear someone say, I would like prayer for my spouse or my child who is facing mental health struggles or difficulties with addiction. Withholding from mentioning these things is another piece of the complicated puzzle that keeps an unjust degree of stigma attached to these kinds of circumstances. This stigma keeps people from asking for help even though they fully are worthy and deserving of that help. There are other situations which people are reluctant to make known even though they would benefit from support. People are often left to suffer in silence and isolation which only makes the experience worse. So many of these situations where we keep quiet are much more common than we think. With that mind in thought, I want to point out a little nugget in today's scripture that I hope will not be overlooked. There is, as stated, two people in this text. The one offering help and the one being helped. There are two, but at no point is any suggestion made that one of them is in any way more valuable than the other. The two are equal in status. The helper does not lord over the other, nor is there anything patronizing in being the recipient of help. The only criticism comes in the phrase, woe to the one who is alone and falls, and does not have another to help. This is a little word to the wise, encouraging us not to hold back. Again, I jump back to the lyrics of I am a rock. I am shielded in my armor, hiding in my room, safe within my womb. I touch no one and no one touches me. Yes, it's a catchy tune, but such an approach to life does little to ensure survival, never mind a sense of well-being. I've mentioned a few ways that you, here in this church, lift up those you know and love. But the picking up of another is not necessarily limited to those we're close to, or even to those whom we like. The parable of the Good Samaritan demonstrates that life in the wider context of community not only requires people to help those they know and like, but also to stretch themselves outside of their comfort zone. In this story, you may recall that a man from Judah had been robbed and beaten and left dying on the edge of the road. 
While others, especially those of significance, passed by, it was a passerby from Samaria that tended to him and brought him back to good health. Now, Judeans and Samaritans hated each other. It may be one thing for Jesus, the Son of God, to break down a barrier like this, but in this story, it's an everyday person that breaches the divide between us and them. In the story of the Good Samaritan, we see one human being simply recognizing the frailty of life and helping another. So when it comes to lifting another up, Jesus' message is that we're called to go outside of that which is familiar and comfortable and care for the stranger and for those with whom we do not see eye to eye. In the same way, it may be someone that you don't like or it's someone that you're reluctant to trust that comes to help you when you're down. Let's be sure to set our differences aside, recognize our shared humanity, and accept their help. As we frequently hear today, we are in this together. Today's scripture continues on saying, If two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? When I first read this thoughts, my when I first read this verse, excuse me, my thoughts were immediately drawn to a video podcast I had seen in my first semester of seminary. The podcast was about a survivor of the Holocaust who recounted one of his boyhood experiences under the oppression of the Nazis. The man spoke of a time in his youth when he and his fellow Jews were packed into a train car headed for a concentration camp. It was winter, and in the evening, the train came to a complete halt. They were stuck in the middle of a snowstorm, and everyone was freezing. The boy saw an older man who was trembling out of control from the cold. Being a capable youth, he took it on upon himself to do everything he could to keep this older man warm. He wrapped his arms around the man, he rubbed his hands against him, and he held him close in an effort to generate heat. He continued to do this through the whole night. When the sun came up and light filtered into the train car, he looked around just to discover that he and the man he was keeping warm were the only two in that train car to survive the night. I share this story because it perfectly illustrates the point that in working to serve and support others, we not only save them, but we save ourselves. The concluding portion of our scripture reading relates to strength in numbers. The one might prevail against another, two will withstand one. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. I have to confess that when I first read this, I had no idea what a three-fold three cord was. It's a rope. I was hoping for something more elaborate, but no, just a rope. The thing is, in the weaving together of multiple fibers, that is what makes a rope strong. Here in the last verse of our text, the writer of Ecclesiastes shifts from talking about individuals to talking about the power present in larger groups. Not only do individuals often, excuse me, not only do individuals offer each other support, but entire communities can work together to back others up, strengthen their voices, and advocate for their rights. We're seeing a lot of this today. And this, my friends, is the work of the church. We are surrounded, as you well know, by problems of discrimination and hatred. Issues of racial inequality are all over the news. We see it in the way that all Muslim brothers and sisters are cast under the light of radical Islam and terrorism. Furthermore, words of hate and disgust are directed at the LGBTQ community 
People go so far as to use the Bible in self-serving ways to justify their cruelty. As followers of Christ, we have the task of combating these supposedly biblical-based claims. We are called to love our neighbor, welcome the stranger, and stand up for those who are being harmed. Now, I hate to break it to you, but you are not a rock, nor an island. No. There's actually another popular song by Simon and Garfunkel that I would like to mention. It hits closer to the truth about being connected with others. Bridge over troubled water. The message of this song is consistent with today's scripture reading about two being better than one. The song opens saying, when you're weary, feeling small, when tears are in your eyes, I will dry them all. I'm on your side. Oh, when times get rough and friends just can't be found, like a bridge over troubled water, I will lay me down. We, my sisters and brothers, are the church. We are called to be a threefold cord. We are called to be a bridge over troubled water. In being these things, we promote love, connection, and wellness, not only for others, but for ourselves and for whole communities. I encourage you to hold these words from Ecclesiastes in your hearts and minds. Consider how you can be as Christ to others. How can you lift them up and keep them warm? And in so doing, save and enrich your own life, as well as that of others. Likewise, please don't be reluctant or ashamed to permit others to do the same for you. Amen.
invite you to join me in the prayer of dedication. Gracious God, we thank you for the abundant blessings you bestow upon the earth. As we offer these gifts in thanksgiving and praise, we pray that they will be a blessing to others. Through, your gift, through our gifts, may word of your goodness spread to the ends of the earth, that all people may know of your love and have make a home for you in their hearts. Amen. This morning's final hymn is now thank we all our God. deep-rooted joy you provide. Amen. Beloved, you're not a rock, nor an island. No. But you are so much more. You are God's hands and God's feet, here, doing the work of God for which you have been called. You are the helpers, keeping others warm, helping them when they fall. Collectively, we, the church, are a threefold cord, a bridge over troubled water. My sisters and brothers, may God's Spirit lead you, may God's strength protect you, may God's peace be with you. Go now in the name of God, by the grace of Christ, and with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Our service of worship is coming to a close. May your week's service to God and community now begin. Amen.